There are simple ways that you can save thousands of dollars with Amazon PPC. And not only is this going to save you thousands of dollars, it's actually going to make you a lot more money as well. Because what I'm going to be showing you in this lesson, in this chapter, is how to pause keywords, how to make negative keywords, how to unpause keywords. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but I'll go into it in detail here in just a little bit. And this is probably one of the most important chapters in this whole thing. I, I probably have said that pretty much on every chapter, but I'm serious when I tell you guys, when you hear me repeat something over and over again, that means you really, really need to know it. Now, here's the thing. Amazon PPC can be very emotional. You think you should be bidding on this keyword because it's a keyword that you think that you should be ranking for, but Amazon doesn't see it that way. And unfortunately, as an emotional bidder with Amazon PPC, we tend to keep pushing that keyword regardless of ACOS, regardless of if it's getting sales or not, because we just want to rank for that keyword. But the key thing is to listen to the data. You need to listen to the data. So let me go into seven steps on saving thousands of dollars with Amazon PPC by just doing the simple steps that don't take long to do at all. And step number one is kind of what I already started getting into is the data. Listen to the data. The data does not lie. Data will tell you whether you should be going after this keyword or search term or not, whether you should be going after this ASIN or not. Listen to the data, make actions based on data. Don't make actions based on emotion. If you go back to chapter five in this series, I show you how to scale a search term report and how to use that search term report to scale your Amazon PPC. All we're doing is we're looking at data at an unbiased way, taking our emotions out of it and using that data to then scale. So make sure you have data to look at. And that's kind of one of the big features with the seven steps that I'm going to go over today. Now, step number two, you guys have heard me say this over and over again, but focus on conversion rate and focus on tacos, not ACOS. Focus on conversion rate and focus on tacos. You have to think about what Amazon wants. Amazon is an algorithm based on sales. They want high conversions and high sales. If you focus on those two metrics, they want sales velocity and they want high conversion. Because when somebody searches something into Amazon, they're going to show the ones that convert the most and that sell the most because they're more likely to make the sale. It's just a simple algorithm. People get so complicated with this A9 algorithm that they think they can hack it and do all this stuff to it when it all just boils down to conversion rate and sales velocity. Now let's go into what I talked about with number two here, tacos. Tacos is your total advertising cost of sale compared to ACOS, which is your advertising cost of sale. There's a big difference between the two. Advertising cost of sales strictly works with just the advertising numbers, advertising spend, advertising sales. Whereas in tacos, total advertising cost of sale works on advertising spend and total sales. There's a big key distinction. Most rookie and novice Amazon PPCers focus on ACOS. Most advanced Amazon PPCers and advanced businesses and businesses that are selling more focus on tacos. You need to convert this in your brain. Tacos is important. ACOS is not. I'm going to go over this one more time just so you guys can understand it. I've gone over it in previous chapters. And the rule of three states that if you hear something three times, you should know it. All right. High conversion rate. We're going to focus on high converting search terms, regardless of ACOS. Because if we have high converting search terms, regardless of ACOS, I'll give you an example here. This will lead to an increase in organic rank because you're focusing on high converting search terms that will push you up in the organic rank. Now, next increased organic rank is going to lead to an increase in organic sales, which will then lead to an increase in profitability, which will then lead to a decrease in tacos because you're shifting, you're using your advertising dollars to push you up in the organic rank, which will then increase your organic sales, which will then decrease your tacos. I hope that makes sense. Please leave a comment down below if it doesn't make sense, but I need you to understand that. Go for high converting search terms, regardless of ACOS, which will lead to an increase in organic rank, which will decrease our tacos, which will increase our profitability. Do do not make decisions on ACOS alone. And that leads me to step number three on saving a lot of money and making a lot of money. Do not look at ACOS of individual campaigns because you may have some campaigns that are performing on high converting keywords that have an ACOS of 100 to 150 to 200%, but they're bringing your tacos down because they're bringing your organic rank up. Quick example to illustrate this point. We have eyelid wipes. And when we sold our eyelid wipes, we would run an exact match single keyword ad campaign for the term sty treatment. Sty treatment, that campaign on that ACOS, 
ran at 150%, but it sold three to four sales a day at a conversion rate of north of 30%. So we converted at over 30% for that search term, but it ran at 150% ACOS. Our target ACOS was 70% account wide. Our account wide target was met. For our overall campaign manager, we were at 70%, but this one campaign was 150%. Most rookie and most novice Amazon PPCers, most sellers, most people that manage Amazon PPC would pause that campaign because it's running so hot but you would be making a huge mistake because even though that campaign's running at 150%, the ACOS is high, but it's decreasing our tacos because it's increasing our organic rank and our organic sales. I hope that makes sense. Again, if you have questions on that, leave a comment down below. All right, now let's jump into some actual tactical things that we can do to save you money. I got your mindset right with steps one, two, and three. Data, 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 tacos, not ACOS, and look at your overall account level ACOS. Don't focus on the individual campaigns. That was step one, two, and three. Step four is pausing search terms when they meet certain criteria. So usually one to two times a week, we will go into our campaigns and we'll actually pause different search terms and keywords based on certain metrics that we've set for our account. Now, each account is a little different. And the reason each account's a little different is because your product may only have a 1% conversion rate where my product has 40%. And so you need to adjust these metrics based on what your conversion rate is already. And if your conversion rate is poor compared to the rest of the category, you're always gonna be at the bottom of the pack. PPC will not help you. You have to get your conversion rate up We've talked about this in previous videos, but with conversion rate, you have to have your listing optimized. You have to have at least a four and a half star appearance in your ratings and reviews. That's so huge. I can't emphasize that enough. And you have to have your bullets and your titles and listing optimized. Go back to chapter two if you need to go over that again, because it's very, 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 very important to have your listing optimized in order to drive PPC. But let me switch over to my screen. We're going to dive into step four and I'll have this graph or this SOP for you to be able to pull up and you can use it whenever you go into weekly pause. I still use this when I go into accounts to pause them weekly and you should too. So you should have this by your side when you're pausing. So let me switch over my screen. We'll do that and then we'll jump back into the seven steps. This is what my setup looks like when I'm pausing campaigns on a weekly basis. What I'm doing here is on my left side, I have my criteria right here. So step four is what we're on by weekly optimization, pausing in negative keywords. And there's two big steps that we do. We look at high ACOS campaigns first. And so here's the instructions. We're gonna set the date range to 30 days, leaving a five-day attribution window. So today's November 30th. We're going to go back to the 27th. I know that's only three days, but Cyber Monday was that day. So that's why I'm going to do it. We're going to go to the 27th through the 27th, October 27th through November 27th. That's a 30-day window with a little bit of an attribution for Amazon to catch up. And then we're going to set, sort the ACOS column from descending highest ACOS at the top. So let's scroll over to ACOS. And we're going to look at the highest at the top. And so you can see this one's 150%. I'm just going to pause that one. This is an exact match campaign, 103%. For exact match campaigns, we consider pausing if the ad spend or the ACOS is above 100%. So if the ACOS is above 100%, I'll probably pause it. You can see right here, it's over 100%. I am going to pause it. We also pause product targeting campaigns, which are OP. So you can see right here, 74%. I'm okay with that. 68%. And I'm okay with the rest of these ACOS. They're not too out of control for me. Our target right here on this account is about 40%. And you can see that overall, let me get the ACOs pulled up. We're at 37%. So I'm not going to be that aggressive with my pausing because overall our account ACOs is where I want it to be. And therefore I don't need to pause that much. So I'm just going to pause those two. I'm going to be a little less aggressive in pausing today. Now let's look at negative exact. So this is going to be for broad phrase auto campaigns that have greater than 50% ACOs. Now, remember we talked about with broad phrase and auto campaigns, we don't use a lot with phrase, but you'll see a lot of broad and autos in here. Those campaigns are discovery campaigns. Therefore, we're trying to discover new keywords all the time. And when Amazon is doing that, you're going to find search terms in there and ASINs even that you need to make negatives. Now, we should have already uploaded our negative phrase list that we created over in chapter one when we did keyword research. But we also need to optimize them throughout every week just to see if we can make more, more search terms and more ASINs negative. So let me show you an example of that as well. So my first broad campaigns right here is at 53%. Our criteria is anything over 50%. We're gonna we're gonna look to optimize it. So let's look at this one. I'm also just gonna look at this other one just so you guys can see another example. And then I'm gonna just scroll down a little bit further. There's another broad one operating at 30% with 65 orders, significant sales velocity there, selling about two a day. So we're gonna leave that one alone. And that should be good. There's a random phrase in here, not doing too bad. Here's the auto campaign. Let me show you that one as well. All right, so with broad phrase and auto, I wanna reemphasize that we usually never pause the campaign. We usually always work to optimize the campaign. Now we may consider pausing the campaign if it's at like a 200 to 300 to 400% ACOS, but you can always optimize broad and auto campaigns. Keep that in mind when you're doing this. 
So let's head over and I'll show you how to optimize it. So here we are inside the ad group level. We're going to click here and then we're going to come down here to search terms. This is all the search terms that you're going for over the last 30 days. And what I like to do is just sort it by spend. And when you sort it by spend, it's going to show you the highest spenders first. And with this broad campaign, you can see that there's nothing really going out of control too bad. Yes, the ACOS is at 53%, but I'm okay with that. There's not a, really a lot of clicks on this, and so nothing to really do here. So I'm just going to close out of that. We're going to do the same thing for this broad campaign. Probably see the same thing. So we'll sort it by spend. And you can see this one's got eight clicks, three sales. I'm going to leave that one on. Nothing else is really out of control. But you can also just kind of look through these and see if there's any words that just don't make sense. And it looks like all these look pretty good. So I'm going to close out of that one too. Same thing here. This is the auto campaign now. We're going to click into the ATM. We're then going to go to search terms, sort it by spend. And then you can see a little more action on this one, but not anything too crazy. But what I'm looking for here is words that just don't make sense with this product. And then I'm going to add them to my negative targeting. You can see I've already added quite a few negatives. That's why our targeting is pretty on point with this. Um, but if you'd find a word that just doesn't make sense, like it's cooking, let's go look at Amazon. I always like to just search what comes up for Amazon for kids cooking. That's a very browse based keywords. We don't, they're probably looking for a lot of things like knives and recipe books. And you can see there's no aprons here on page one. So that tells me that Amazon doesn't consider kids cooking relevant for my apron. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this, I'm going to take it over up here and I'm just going to type it in. I'm going to take a quick look at it just to make sure we're not making any sales somewhere else on another search term around kids cooking. And you can see it is causing some clicks. Kids cooking aprons, we are applicable for that. So what I want to do is I want to come over here to negative targeting. And I'm just going to negative exact kids cooking. And that will get rid of that keyword and save us a little bit of money. And you're going to do that every single week. Now, these are very, very small campaigns because this is a very small account. This is one of our test dummy accounts that we use to develop our software and for the training purposes. But you're going to have a lot more words in there when you do your account. So let me know if you have any questions about yours. I'd be happy to audit your, your campaigns for free for you just to kind of show you how to do this. Just leave a comment below this video. And we'd be happy to jump on a call and just do that for you. So keep that in mind. Leave a comment down below to do that. All right. So we considered pausing exact product targeting and sponsored display product targeting. We don't optimize these because there's not much optimization to do. We then went through and added our negative keywords in here as well. So we looked to add negative keywords. We didn't find much though. So now we're going to move on to filter number two, which is right here. It's going to be zero orders. So we're going to do that same thing. Come up here, enabled. We're going to then going to do filtered by zero orders. And then we're going to sort it by ad spend with the highest being at the top. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to look for things that have been spending a lot, but making no orders. So I know that these have zero orders, so I don't have to worry about ACOs. This one right here. So we're going to pause anything with greater than 25 clicks and zero orders for this product. Now, if your product has a lower conversion rate, you need to adjust this. So if you have a higher conversion rate, you might want to go after 10 clicks. So we have a pretty high conversion rate on this product. So this product targeting ad that's shown 13 times with no sales, I'm going to turn that off. It's going to save us $18 for this exact match one. This one might be, they might be looking for just a direct hat. Um, kids cooking aprons. These are all pretty relevant and they're getting clicks. They're just not getting sales yet. So I'm going to leave those on. This one right here is a broad match campaign. So with broad, we're going to move on to negative exact, but these OW for us is exact match campaigns. Not much you can do to optimize those again. So you're either going to pause them or you're going to leave them on. We're going to leave them on. And the reason we leave them on is because then we can adjust the bids to optimize them. And then same thing with broad, you can adjust the bids to optimize them. We'll show you how to do that in another video, but let's just work on optimizing them by adding negatives. So we're going to open up that broad. Let's see if there's any other ones on here. Looks pretty good. And something else I like to do is this is kind of more of a monthly thing that we do is we like to just clean up our accounts. And so what we'll do is we'll look for older campaigns. So these are over a month old that are getting no sales. And so what I like to do here is just clean these up. So what I'll do is these aren't getting sales and they're not getting clicks. So I'm going to filter another one clicks equal to zero. And this is no sales, no clicks, but they're running. And so you can see, we've got about 31 campaigns here. And none of them are new. So that tells me that Amazon just doesn't find these campaigns relevant. And so what I'm going to do here is just highlight all of them and just pause them, just get rid of them. And then what that does is it just helps focus up your thing. But going back to this, so we're going to look for negative exact matches that we can make in this broad campaign. So we're going to click into the ad group again. We're going to make sure our negative targeting has been uploaded. So let's go back to the campaign level, see if our negative keywords have been uploaded. So no negative keywords have been uploaded to this one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my negative keyword master list. Let me get that pulled up. And here's our master negative list. So I'm going to pull this down. 
grab all of these, come over here, and I'm going to do negative targeting, phrase, add those in. And this is actually going to be step seven. And I'm going to show you that here in just a little bit. Let me actually just jump down to step seven, actually, just because I'm doing it for you right now. So step seven on our SOP is continuously adding negative keyword updating. And so you're going to constantly be adding new broad, new auto, and maybe even new phrases if you're going to use phrase match, but we don't like to use phrase match. And so as you continually add auto and broad campaigns, you want to go back to your master negative list that we made in chapter two, and we're going to upload it to all those new broad and auto campaigns to save you money in the future. So step seven is continuously uploading those to your list. All right, let's go back to this one. So we're going to go to the search terms and we're going to sort it by spend. And you can see not a lot of clicks or anything. So everything looks pretty good. Very few clicks, very few waste, little ad, wasted ad spend. So we'll leave this on even though ours does not have ruffles. So I just found a brand new phrase that I'm going to add to my master list, and then I'm going to add it to over here. So even though you're not getting a lot of clicks that aren't converting, you can still look to see, look for search terms that may not make sense to your, your product. All right, so that was step four. Now, step five, as you can see right here, is weekly unpausing. So what happens is when we go through this and we pause these different campaigns, sometimes we can pause one and attribution can catch up with Amazon. Amazon's attribution can be delayed up to seven days, but usually it's about 48 hours. And we want to make sure that we didn't pause a campaign that might actually be profitable for us. So with this one, what I'll do is I will go to the pause campaigns. I will then sort by sales with top sales being at the top. And then you can see right here, still pretty high ACOS, so I'm not going to unpause these. But let's say attribution caught up and these ACOS were now in our normal range. We would then unpause these and get them running again, keep that in mind. And then finally with step six, bid adjustments. And so what we wanna do here is we wanna regularly adjust bids for campaigns that aren't really producing much. And so how we do that is we go to targeting and we're gonna do enabled and clicks equals zero. So you can see all of these products were, or excuse me, all these search terms that we're not getting any clicks for. And so what I'm gonna do here, see we're getting some impressions, but not much, is I'm going to highlight all of these and I'm going to bulk actions. And I just want to get some data on them because right now they're not serving. And so we're not getting any data on them. So I'm just going to increase it by 30%. I am more aggressive. And so if you don't want to go 30%, you can go 20%. But then you can see here, we just raised all those bids and they went above the suggested bid. So they'll probably start showing a little bit more. And so that's how we do step six. All right. So the seven steps for saving thousands of dollars with your Amazon PPC. Step number one is embracing the data. We showed you how to do a search term report in chapter five. Go back and really master that. Do that monthly because that is pure data from your PPC campaigns that are going to help you out tremendously. Step number two is focusing on conversion rate and tacos. High converting keywords and focus on the tacos of your account because you don't want to focus on ACOS because you may have high ACOS campaigns that are very high in conversion rate that decrease your tacos, therefore making you more profitable and will shut down those high ACOS campaigns because they have a high ACOS, but you shouldn't do that because it decreases your tacos. And that brings me to step three, which is don't look at individual campaign performances. Don't look at individual ACOS performances to make big decisions. Look at the overall account ACOS if that's meeting your target. Don't worry about ones that have high ACOS if the search term that they're going for is a high converting search term. Emphasis on that over and over again. Step number four is weekly optimization through pausing, unpausing, and putting negative keywords. So we pause exact match and product targeting ads because we can't do much optimization there. We'll adjust the bids up and down, but if it's just getting too out of control, we'll pause it. For broad and auto campaigns, those are discovery campaigns and we can always optimize those. We can optimize the bids. We can optimize by putting negative keywords into them. And we can do a lot more with those. So I rarely ever pause broad and auto campaigns because we can always continuously optimize them. And then step number five, I kind of briefly covered that with unpausing. If you in the past pause the campaign and you go back and attributions caught up to it, you want to unpause it then later to let it continue to serve. Step number six is adjusting your bids. And so if you're, you have a bunch of search terms or targets that aren't getting impressions or clicks, increase the bids by 30%. 
And then therefore they'll start to show again because you're trying to get more data. You're trying to scale sales. And then step number seven, finally, is continuously uploading negatives to new broad and new auto campaigns. If you have a broad and auto that is getting out of control, step number one is make sure you've uploaded your negative master list. And then step number two is going into the search terms at the ad group level, seeing if you can optimize it even further. I hope this video was helpful. I know there was a lot in this video, so rewatch it as many times as you can. Also, if you've signed up for our free Amazon PPC masterclass at ProfitablePineapple.com, you'll have the SOP for this. Pull up that SOP and then do this every single week, just like I showed you here in this video. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'm going to see you in the next video.